Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will study breast ultrasound image appearances. Here we have the images of normal breast. The uppermost layer is the skin. This is the hyperechoic layer and below that is the subcutaneous zone. It is usually hypoechoic as compared to the tissues below and the largest region is the memory zone it usually has mixed echogenicity most of the pathologies occur in this zone and this hyperechoic area is the fibroglandular tissue these hyperechoic slanted or diagonal lines are Cooper ligaments. This striated structure is the pectoral muscle. The retro memory zone lies between the pectoral muscle and the memory zone. Usually it appears smaller because it is compressed due to probe pressure. And this shadowing over here is due to the rib. Here we have more images of normal breast. We can see the three zones and the fibroglandular tissue which is hyperechoic. Usually the retromammary zone is below this fibroglandular tissue but it is not always the case. Breast pathologies can be classified by using a system known as by RADS. It stands for Breast Imaging Reporting and Data System. In total it has seven categories. In by RADS 0 we need further images. We need more scans such as mammograms or ultrasound scans. By RADS 1 is for normal breast tissue where there is no mass or no distortion, no lesion. Both these images are by RADS 1. A simple cyst will appear as an anechoic structure with posterior enhancement. The cyst will be round or ovoid with a smooth hyperechoic border. It is classified as BIRADS2, which is benign. A complicated cyst will have fat fluid levels and internal echoes. These are fat fluid levels. The low density fluid is at the top and the high density fat is at the bottom. Now these cysts may resemble malignant lesions that is why a follow-up is needed. Examples of complicated cysts include oil cysts and galactoseals. A fibroadenoma is a benign tumor which will appear as a hypoechoic round or ovoid mass. It may have a hyperechoic rim known as a pseudo capsule and it has a parallel orientation. It is wider than tall. You can see it is wider instead of being taller. This is a sign of benign lesion. It is classified as BIRADS2, which is benign. However, routine screening mammography should be done. Here we have another image of fibroadenoma. It has a smooth border. It may have calcifications. You can see the pseudo capsule here and it has a parallel orientation. It is wider than tall. A lipoma will appear as a hyperechoic rounded mass. Usually hyperechoic 
rounded masses are benign. It has a birad score of 2. Despite this appearance, routine screening mammography should be done. Hyperechoic masses that are ovoid, rounded, or well circumscribed are usually benign. Another benign feature is the parallel orientation in which it is wider than tall. Examples include angiolipoma, hemangioma, hamartoma. They usually appear as hyperechoic masses with a hyperechoic border. Here we have an image of intramammary lymph node. They have a hypoechoic outer cortex. This is the cortex and a hyperechoic central mediastinum, which is hyperechoic usually due to fat. They are classified as birads 2. A neurofibroma is a rare benign tumor which appears as a hypoechoic mass with posterior enhancement. Now it is very tricky because it resembles a cyst, so it can be misdiagnosed very easily, but it is a rare lesion. A sebaceous cyst is a complex cyst which is present closer to the skin. Here you can see it is present just below the skin and it is even involving the skin so this superficial location can help us in diagnosing sebaceous cyst it is classified as birads 2 a simple cyst containing a small hyperechoic calculus is usually a milk of calcium cyst these cysts are also benign. Eggshell calcifications are small calcifications which may have shadowing if they are a bit dense. They have a birads score of 2. Complex cysts are rated as birads 3 because they need a follow up exam. Usually thin hyperechoic septations are benign but they still need a follow-up so that is why it is rated as birads 3. Clustered microcysts will have a group of cysts clustered together. The diameter is less than 3 mm and septations may be present. It is rated as BIRADS 3 because follow up is required. Fat necrosis has a variety of appearances. In the acute phase, the lesion is new, so it may appear as a hyperechoic lesion due to edema. Fat necrosis appearances overlap with malignant lesions, so a follow up is required. So it is rated as BIRADS 3. Fat necrosis enters late stage after 1.5 years. It will have calcified walls which give posterior acoustic shadowing. Now we move on to BIRADS categories which have chance of malignancy. BIRADS 4 has three subcategories. In 4A, the chance of malignancy is between 2 to 10 percent, B is 10 to 49 percent, and 4C is 50 to 94 percent. BIRADS 5 has greater than 95 percent chance of malignancy. And by red 6 is a biopsy proven malignancy. Usually hypoechoic masses with irregular walls or a spiculated appearance 
are malignant and they have a taller than wide orientation. Here we have a case of lymph node metastasis. We are comparing it with a non malignant lymph node. The cortex is very thick, which gives it an abnormally hypoechoic appearance. It is usually a sign of malignancy. Intraductal papilloma is not very common. Its appearance usually involves dilated ducts and a well defined nodule. It is rated as BIRADS 4 and biopsy is advised. Intracystic papillary carcinoma consists of a complex cyst with a thick mural based nodule. This nodule will be attached to the wall. It will not move around. Here we have another image of intracystic papillary carcinoma. This one has a thick isoechoic septation as well. These thick isoechoic septations are usually a sign of malignancy as opposed to the thin hyperechoic septation which is usually benign and here is a large thick mural nodule ductal carcinoma in situ will have hypoechoic masses which will be microlobulated which means they have these type of outpouchings and there is no enhancement which means it is a solid mass in this image, the mass involves the ducts, so it appears elongated. Usually, these hypoechoic masses involving the duct are ductal carcinoma in situ. Invasive ductal carcinoma is the most common form of breast cancer. It also has variable appearances. One of them is a circumscribed mass, hypoechoic mass with some calcifications which are usually invasive ductal carcinoma. Here we have another case of invasive ductal carcinoma. We have an ill-defined hypoechoic mass and it has a non-parallel orientation. It is taller than wide. The AP diameter will be more than the horizontal measurement. It also has posterior shadowing, which is usually a sign of grade 1 invasive ductal carcinoma, but it is not always the case. Here we have invasive ductal carcinoma with posterior acoustic enhancement. This enhancement is usually a sign of a higher grade cancer. It also has a spiculated appearance suggesting a malignant lesion. It is rated as BIRADS 4C. Here we have another image of invasive ductal carcinoma showing us a circumscribed hypoechoic mass with uniform internal echoes. It also has posterior enhancement suggesting a high grade cancer. You can see that invasive ductal carcinoma has lots of appearances. Ultimately, it is confirmed with biopsy. Mastitis is the inflammation of breast tissue. Its appearances consist of hyperechoic fat lobules and some hypoechoic areas. Another distinguishing feature is that it has thickened skin. Here you can see the skin is very thick as compared to the normal image. These are the features of mastitis. Duct ectasia involves dilated duct with branching tubular anechoic structures with the diameter measuring more than 2 millimeters. 
The normal ducts are somewhat difficult to visualize. They usually have mixed echoes. Here we have a case of infected and inflamed cyst. It has thick isoechoic walls and it has dependent debris which means this debris will settle down due to gravity. This is the gravity dependent side. This debris will move in accordance with the patient position. This debris will move. Using this feature we can differentiate it from a mural nodule. Another feature is seen on Doppler. It is the presence of increased blood flow in the thick wall. A normal breast implant is anechoic with a double layered hyperechoic shell. And these are the normal breast tissues. In an implant rupture, we have a step ladder sign which are linear horizontal hyperechoic bands representing folds of a collapsed shell. It suggests intracapsular rupture. A silicone granuloma suggests extracapsular rupture and gives us a snowstorm sign. In this we have a hyperechoic circumscribed superficial border with dirty posterior shadowing. This shadowing is grayish. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.